I want to welcome everyone today um, to our time that we have together. I believe in this time that we have that God is going to do great things. I believe that God is going to touch people. I believe that God is going to protect. I believe that God is going to heal. Even as we get together in this, in this new format, Acts 7 and 48 says that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. So wherever you are today, whether it's in your living room, maybe around your kitchen table, at your computer, maybe even I caught you still in bed. Wherever you are, God is there. He is not contained to a building. And nor is he confined to a space of time. So whenever you're watching this, maybe it's a week later, maybe it's even a year later. Our God is a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I have a word that I want to share with you today, but before we get to that, I wonder if we could join together in prayer. And I want to ask Sister Alyssa to lead us in a song, but let's pray together. Jesus, we are thankful that we still have this opportunity to get together. We are asking that you will now bless everyone who is watching this, that you will minister to specific needs. You see, Lord, you see the, the worries and the concerns. You see, God, everyone. You see every problem. And we know, Jesus, that we can lean on you during this time. So we're asking for your help in Jesus' name.
in the Gospels, Jesus asked many more questions than he answered. In fact, Jesus is recorded to ask over 300 questions. Just to Job alone, God asked over 70 questions to one man. Today, I believe God is asking you a question. May I have your attention, please? We've heard this phrase before. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read some scripture out of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I'd like to read this out of the New King James Version. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1 says, Now it shall come to pass. When all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul, that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. To love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Also, verse 7 says, The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 11 says, For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Verse 17 says, But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I will announce to you today that you will surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So if Jesus has your attention today, let me ask you two more questions. First, in the midst of all of this, what is God doing? And second, and really much more importantly, what should be our response? So, in a time where there are shutdowns, in a time where there are shortages, you may ask, 
God, what are you doing? I want to assure you, this is not a surprise to God. God knows exactly what is happening. God knows exactly how far, how fast, to what lengths this virus will spread. You may ask if God knows all this, and he knows how far it will go, why doesn't he just stop it? And that leads us to our second question. What should our response be in this trial? Second Chronicles 7.13 addresses this very subject. It says, if disease or, or pestilence is among my people, what is our response? See, God is sovereign. We don't know the why. We don't know how long. Only God knows that. But we do have a responsibility. We do have a choice as to how are, how are we going to respond in this time of trial. And verse 14 of 2 Chronicles says that we are to humble ourselves and pray and seek His face. So our number one response in this hour is to pray. Now we are to follow the guidelines that are given to us. We are to wash our hands and pray. We are to keep proper distance and pray. I believe now more than ever God is calling his people to pray. And if you don't know where to start or how to start, I believe God is, is wanting to teach his people. I believe God is calling for a, a, a renewal and a revival of prayer. While we pray, we need to realize that God can take the most difficult situation, the most dire situation, God can take it and use it for good. Romans 8, 28 says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So I can believe and stand on the Word of God that God is going to work something good from this. I really don't know what good, but I can tell you this. Maybe if we as a people have been too preoccupied with sports. Is God maybe trying to get our attention? If our busy schedule has gotten in the way of our relationship with God. If the busyness of life, if maybe I just didn't really think I needed to pray. I believe God has our attention. So how else should we respond? God is about redemption, recovering, restoring. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When you passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And how did he start that off? He started off by saying, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. He is waiting for us to call out to him. He wants to bring us through this. He wants to redeem. He wants to restore. He wants to revive. He said, no matter where you go, no matter, no matter what trial you're going to go through, I'm going to be there with you. And then if we go down in that same chapter, in Isaiah chapter 43, 
We get to verse 19, and Isaiah 43 and 19 says this, Behold, I will do a new thing. I've done more new things in the past five days than I can remember. I really, I would have to go back to like having our first child, changing diapers, trying to put a baby to sleep. That, that's what this reminds me of. Streaming and uploading and these are new things. But I believe that God is doing a new thing. I believe that God is reaching new people. I believe there are people that maybe have not been to a church in a while. That have not worshipped with, with other believers. I believe God is reaching for you. I believe there are those that maybe haven't listened to a sermon or, or, or gone on to a, to, a, to a church website or, or watched this. I believe that God is reaching new people. And I believe now like never before, we as a nation are reaching out to God. He's doing a new thing. Why? Why does God do all this? Why would God allow something like this? I want to tell you that He wants a closer relationship with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16 says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. you see, this is what God wants. God is Calling to his people. He's saying you are the temple. You are the church. It was easier for us to say that when we were able to get together. But now that we're not able to get together church as we have in the past. That scripture certainly takes on a, a new meaning. You are the church. Wherever you get together, you are the church. When you pick up the phone and call someone to check on them, you are the church. And God is telling us that I will dwell with them, walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Why is God doing all this? I believe he's calling us back to prayer. I believe he's calling us back to restoration and I believe he's calling us back to relationship he desires to be our people he desires to be amongst us and that just doesn't mean in a church building that means wherever you come together and pray God is in the middle of that prayer meeting when you call out to him he is as near as a mention of his name so although I can't explain why is God doing this? I believe this. He's trying to get our attention. And how we respond, I believe, makes all the difference. We're going to close in a few minutes and, and, and we're going to pray together. But again, I would, I would like us to, to, to sing together. I would like us to pray together. When we finish up, I want to just close with a couple comments about some teaching that, that we have coming. But I wonder if we could, wherever you're at right now, whenever you're watching this, I wonder if we could take a few moments right now. And could we just seek the Lord? Dear Lord, we don't know the reasons why. We don't understand everything that is going on right now. But Lord, we do feel that you are calling us to uh, back to a relationship. I believe that there are some that 
maybe have walked away. And I believe now you're giving us a, a time to, to come back. I believe, Lord, that you are calling your people back to prayer. So, Lord, we want to respond the right way. I believe, God, that you are allowing us to have cleared schedules and limited distractions so that we can focus on you. Lord, you have our attention. And now, Lord, I pray that you help us respond in the right way. In Jesus' name. Again, we thank you for joining us. We invite you to check back 
like, subscribe. I don't know what else to say. But thank you so much for being with us. And God bless you in Jesus' name.